Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Who who said hello? Martin or Lauren? Oh, uh, it was me, Lauren. All right, Lauren. Okay. Yes. I will do my best, Lauren, to to keep that up. Okay. <laughs> no problem. How y'all doing? Doing good. Good, 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 good. Uh, generally speaking, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Zoom meetings at 12 o'clock uh, every Monday and Wednesday, all right? This okay. is what I'm going to use for my office hours. Seem fair enough, guys? Yes. I I'll be perfectly honest with you. And uh, I what I tried to do last semester was I tried to use a discussion forum. And I swear to God, I didn't get one person. One, I didn't get one person that went to the discussion room before the Zoom meeting. I'm hoping that uh, I get a little better response this time, okay? You do right. not have to show up until 1230. Fair enough? Yep. Uh, okay, I got Diane and Martin. Lourdes? Okay, I'm just sitting here. Anybody have any questions before we start? It's about 14 minutes before I have to get into the actual session. Anything? Nothing at all. So you guys are all ready. I can give you the final right now and we can just stop all this, right? Lourdes, you don't smile at all? Thank you. Okay. So I got Maria in too now. Okay. Martin Morales. Hernandez. Nothing, guys. You got nothing for me. All right. Just, guys, if you don't have anything for me, I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing right now. Class doesn't officially begin until 1230. This is when I'm going to hold my office hours. Generally, I'll open a Zoom meeting early. Uh, I'll open a Zoom meeting early. Esperanza, who are you? Esperanza, I need you to, I need you to. Hi. All right, who Hi. are you, Esperanza? Hi, I'm Ian. For some reason, um, my mom, she used this, um, this computer too for Zoom meetings for work. Okay, Ian, uh, your, last, your last name. Uh, Wu W. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to change my name from Esperanza. It's, it's okay with me. I just basically, do you remember that uh, guy that, got, that uh, was charged with hacking? Um, and he got to his... Uh, his pretrial, and apparently the judge and all the attorneys had porn that was uh, distributed through them. I'm um, just trying to prevent you okay. from being subjected to porn by an uh, unauthorized person. Okay. All right. uh, Ian W, right? Yeah, W Bocas. W. -U. Okay, gotcha. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just taking it. Anybody have any questions? All right, Eric. Eric. Erica. <laughs> Erica, okay. That makes sense. And <laughs> what's your last name, Erica? Renza, R-E-N-Z-A. That makes sense too, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin Cravens is in, okay. Uh, Kevin Cravens, Nadine. Yes. Is it Nadine or is that pronounced that or correct? Yeah, it's Nadine. Nadine. Okay. Your last name, Nadine. Gotcha. Yep. Begins with a Z, right? Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Michael Hughes is in. All right. Uh, mean, Kelly Mean, Kelsey Means. All right. Swine Baker. Materos. Okay. Maria Torres. 
Any questions at all, guys? You should have a lot. Um, yeah, I got a question. Good for you. Um, for the class um, for 1025 Lab, do we where do we purchase the code? Because I, I was reading, it says on hands-on lab, but I wasn't able okay. to find the link. The, all right. You have two, two chances to get that, one of which is through the bookstore. All right. It oh. is it is a little pricier, but it's a little more convenient to get it through the bookstore. All right? If they tell you everybody that has my went my class on my online class with me, if they tell you that your class does not need a kit, they are wrong. OK, right. I just cleared that today. You do need a kit. If you have a problem with the person at the counter doing that, you tell them you'd like to speak to a manager because it has been cleared. You do need a kit. Fair enough, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Susanna Hernandez, do I have you yet? Yes, I do. Six, seven. Eight, nine, ah, I actually have everybody that's here now. We good, guys? I have a question. I have an answer. Um, who, who, is... First of all, wait, wait. Every question has a cost. You have to tell me your name. I'm Maria. Maria, last name Maria. Torres. Okay, good enough. Okay, Maria, what's your question? Um, for the lab kit, is it only available at the Del Mabry, Mabry campus or is it also available yes. like at Brandon? Or... Yes. The reason it basically the people that are in the Dale Mabry lab chose different experiments than Brandon and the other campuses. So yes, you have to purchase it in the Dale Mabry bookstore. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Thank you. Um, if question, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, wait. What's, your, what's the cost? <laughs> my name is Erica. Okay, Erica. Um, I already took my lab. So basically I'm just taking uh, okay, the lecture. Time. Oh, good. Who'd you have last semester? Embarrassing. Uh, but, uh, I forgot. She's like a Russian lady. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that he meant like, like you like can start doing it since twelve. I don't know. Yeah, no, look at okay. Stuff. Who's who's speaking now? Whoever's speaking now, you need to you need to either stay in the class or mute yourself. Okay, mm -hmm. Erica, your question. Um, so I don't need to buy that lab kit that you're talking no, about. Chris. No, absolutely okay. not. So I just basically have to buy the code that you said that we have. Okay. Yes. And you can do that one of two ways. You can either purchase, I believe that you can purchase the book and the code comes to it. I may be wrong about that, but the other way no, is to like just go through. Like, what the brushes and stuff. Cletus? Cletus? Yes? Hi, are you speaking Hi. or is there? Yeah, right. sorry, I, f I forgot to mute. No, no problem, no problem. I generally want your mics on guys. I generally want your mics on because I teach an interactive classroom. Okay. Okay, um, by the way, um, so the class starts at 1230, wow. right? It's not a yes, I'm sorry. You, you hesitated between the 12 and the 30, okay? Yeah, the class it's... begins at 12.30. Okay, okay. I have my office hours on Zoom right before the class begins. Fair enough? Fair enough? Yes, yes thank, thank, you. You. thank you. And uh -huh. how do you pronounce your name? Kaladies. 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 Kaladies, yeah. All right, I'm going to phonetically... I'm going to phonetically put you in my book now. All right. Uh, yeah, I got to go. My wife will get upset because I talk loud and I interrupt her. So I'm going to close my door. All right. All right. We got next joining us. Good. All right, I got 
Mm, probably about half the class in now. Hey, and I got six minutes before it starts. How wonderful. All right, guys, Erica, you've, you've been through this class before, right? Erica? Yes, I have. Is it hard? Uh, it's it's uh, difficult, you know, you just gotta pay attention. <laughs> no, I, I had one of my students in my summer Chem 2 class, put it as best as I can put it. And what he said is chemistry is very, 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 very hard. Okay, that is true. That is the absolute truth behind chemistry. And the problem with chemistry, more so than any other subject, is it builds. And if you don't have the good foundation, everything is going to collapse on you. So you got to make sure that you get this stuff, this foundation built. Now, the first subjects we're going to go into are really fairly easy. And because they are fairly easy, you may get a little bit overconfident. And then we get when we get into chem reactions, moles, empirical formulas, stoichiometry, you are not going to know what's going on. So it's insidious in that fashion. So just stick with me. We will get you through this. I have a good track record of getting people through to the final. I think last semester, uh, at least 85% of the people that started with me ended up taking the final with me. So I have good expectations for you all. The other thing is, guys, the more enthusiasm you bring to the class, the better the class is going to be. Because there's going to be a lot of times when I'm just trying to pull things out. And if I'm just speaking by myself, let's face it, do you want to listen to somebody speak for an hour and 15 minutes by themselves? I know it would bore the snot out of me. And I have, I've had those teachers which literally, who literally sit there, pop, another slide goes on the PowerPoint and they read. Then they get done, pop, another slide. So it's my fervent, uh, if anybody catches me doing that, yell at me, you get an extra credit point, all right? You get an extra credit point if I just read off the slide. Another way you get extra credit points, if you correct any mistake of mine. Did any, do I owe any points to anybody so far? Uh, Some te technically me, because you mispronounced my name. No, 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 that doesn't count. Doesn't count, okay, never mind. Uh, Who is that, who's talking? Oh, uh, Lauren. Lauren. Sorry, Lauren. No. <laughs> this is a genetic defect I have. I picked it up from my father. My father, for the life of him, could not pronounce a name to save his life. So I have picked up somewhat of that. It's been diluted because of my mother's genes, but I still have it. So if I say your name wrong, please correct me immediately. Because if you don't correct me immediately, it gets put in here and I can't get it out. Fair enough, guys? Yes. All right, I got two more minutes. Anybody have any other questions here? No. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go through. Ah, I'll wait a few more minutes. Two more minutes, exactly. Anything else, guys, that you have in general? Because I'm going to go through and start my talk in a few minutes. What I'm going to go through, go ahead. Um, I have a question, Maria. Um, so I was looking through the messages that you sent, and I can't find, like, the code that, like, I can't find where you said I can find the code. For, for, uh, for my lab and mastering for the homework? Yes, for this class. Okay. Uh, there is a... I will go through it in a second, but when we go through the course, 
there'll be modules off to the left. There'll be folders off to the left. One of those folders says My Lab and Mastering. Okay. You click on that and you can go through and purchase the kit that way. Okay, thank you. Any other general questions? Oh, we're down to the last minute before we start, guys. This is the exciting time. Oh, the tension is palpable. Can you tell I have an English degree as well? <laughs> I went back and got my English degree at FIU. Ah, time. It's time. You're mine now. You are all mine. All right. Is Lennox here? Sota? Angelica. Angelica, Sota just managed to come in. And Angelica, too. All right, good enough. Uh, Sierra. Taylor. Celine. Here. Thank you, Celine. Uh, Richard. Richard Mondello. Kevin. I'm here. Thank you, Kevin. David. Yeah, David, just <laughs> right on cue. Um, Lucas. Gregory. Oh, sorry. That's me. <laughs> Mirabel. Haley, Noah, present. Thank you, Noah. Uh, Emery, Emery. I thought I saw your name out there. Sarah, I did get you. All right, uh, and Winifred. Maybe it was Winifred I saw. Yeah. Is there anybody whose name I did not call? I didn't hear you say Erica. That's because I got you already, Erica. Oh, Sorry. Okay. Um, David. David, I got you. You got in at the last second. Mine Mine as well. Angela, Hush, one at a time. Who? Kaladies. Kaladies, I already got you. Adriana. Adriana, what's your last name, Adriana? Goddard. Got it. Angelica. Angelica, last, Alan, got you. Thank you. Do you have Angela? I'm sorry, who? Angela Joy. Angela, got you, got you. Okay. Thank Lennox, you. Professor Lennox. Just got you. You just joined us. And Thank you, sir. Oh, there's somebody that I missed. Richard is in here too. Was Would mine called? Um, oh. Susanna. Susanna may not have been called, but I may have got you beforehand. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, Taylor. I'm looking for Taylor. I'm looking for Lucas, Maribel, and Emery. Um, my name wasn't called, but I'm in here. I'm Who Haley. Haley, you came in. You came in a little late. I got you. I saw oh, okay. your name. I saw your name flash by. Oh, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, please keep your mics on. The only time I don't want your mics on is if you have background noise. Okay. Try to keep your conversations with other people to a minimum while you're in the class. My name is. Uh, my name is Greg Popovich. Please feel free to call me Mr. P, Professor P, Professor, do not call me doctor. I've not earned that title. Does anybody know what a doctor is? And I don't mean medical doctor. Does anybody know what a doctor is? You have what? a doctorate? I do not, well, did you have a doctorate? Yeah, but that's not all it is. Oh. If, you have, if you're called doctor, what have you done besides get the doctorate? What you've done, ladies oh, and- Oh, a dissertation? Somebody that has fully uh, mastered the material or the subject. 
or the course that the person is doing? Lennox, you're very close, Lennox. Basically, a PhD is somebody that studies a small amount of stuff for enough, for enough time that eventually they know everything about nothing. <laughs> At least I got a little laugh from somebody, guys. The jokes do not get better than that. All right? So basically, to give you a background of what I am, I have a Bachelor of Science from West Virginia University, and I have a Master of Science from the University of Pittsburgh. Now in years. Absolutely. Are you from there, Michael? Uh, Western PA, Uniontown. I went to Uniontown is where we used to go to get our beer. Yes, sir. <laughs> Actually, I grew up, I grew up in uh, uh, Beaver County, Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, Michael. Yeah. All right, so basically, I, I also have, as I mentioned, I have a BA in English from FIU, and I went and got my master's from USF in 2010. By the way, that's the real USF, University of San Francisco, not directionally challenged University of Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, this Tampa is not South Florida. It's my general campaign that I want them to change the name of the University of South Florida. I spent one year as a synthetic chemist for Revlon Healthcare Group. My job was to make new medicine for high blood pressure possibilities. In one year, I made 23 compounds nobody else in the world had ever made before. It's probably one of my proudest achievements as a chemist. I spent 27 years as a forensic scientist. Uh, I spent one year teaching high school English at Pasco High. And ladies and gentlemen, that year taught me one thing. Ninth graders should be caged and let out maybe when they're 45. I've been married for about 30 years now. I have one daughter, three grandchildren. Uh, one of whom is in their second year of uh, college at FAU. And he's undergoing basically the same problems you are with all this Zoom meeting stuff. Interesting. My passion, I got two major passions in life, travel. So if you wanna get me off topic, talk to me about something about geography around the world. And chemistry. No, dogs. I've had six dogs in my life, love dogs. So if you, again, getting me off topic, that's another great way. Uh, my expectations for you. What is the half-life of carbon-14? Remember, guys, this is your class. You pay for it, get your money's worth. You're gonna learn more if you come prepared. By coming prepared, I mean you either need to read the TRO text, look at my PowerPoint presentations, look at the videos I've provided for you and doing the homework. If you know something about the subject matter before you come into class, it makes it so much easier for you to learn the extra material that comes on top. I do run an interactive class, which means Soto, I'm going to be calling on people, okay? Answer, Soto. Yep. All right. I'm going to be calling on people, mainly for a couple of reasons, one of which is I think keeping you on your toes makes it a much more interesting class. Besides, you don't want to hear me drone on for 75 minutes each Monday and Wednesday afternoon. So I like to keep an interactive classroom. I believe you learn better from that. It's an important life skill, guys, because how often are you challenged on a subject that is a little bit technical in nature? You're gonna have to learn how you 
can adapt how you learn to answer questions. That's a life skill, guys. Now, I'm introducing new material. I understand that. There are a lot of times when there's no way in the world, I was gonna use another word, there's no way in the world you can know the answer. I don't know. Repeat from me. I don't, I know. don't know. I don't know. Thank you. I don't know. It's a perfectly good answer. Have you ever been on the phone with one of those phone tree people? And you've been on there and they're going off on a tangent for about 30 minutes. And then they find out that what they were telling you was wrong. Save us time, guys. I don't know is a wonderful response. It's not a bad response. It's a great response because that tells me that I need to go back and either reteach something or I need to have you learn it. I teach Socratically, which means, ladies and gentlemen, that what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep on asking you questions to try and lead you into the right direction. Require materials. So what is the half-life of carbon-14? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Absolutely. Great. Sorry, could you ask it again? I didn't really understand the question. What is the half-life of carbon-14? Basically, it's a radioactive uh, Six. Question. I feel like it has a 27. Isn't it six? Thousand. No. Like over 50, Okay, 7, can, I, can I ask you a question? Let me, what, what was that? Over 5,700 or something around there. Did you just memorize that or did you look it up? No, I remember learning that in high school because I'm in high school. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy. It's like 5714, absolutely perfect. But if you didn't know it, I don't if know. you didn't know it, do you have the means? to look it up. Yes. It says, um, wow, half-life of 5730 okay. plus minus 40 years. How'd you find that? Who's speaking? Uh, Ian. Ian, uh, I'm just Ian. Ian, how'd you find that? Point it up again. Guys. It's backwards, I think, but. No, I can read it. Guys, okay. do you have cell phones? Not like that. Yes, sir. If you have cell phones, leave them on because you can check up on stuff I'm saying. Remember, if you correct me, you get an extra point for a quiz. So keep your cell phones on. That's what I want to I want to emphasize for you. You need to buy the textbook as a reference material. This is not a required equipment. Now, can you get by just on my PowerPoints and the videos? Probably yes. But have not the fully. I'm sorry? Not totally or not fully. Not 100%. Not 100%? The textbook is an excellent reference. That's one point. The second and, point. And the brain? And your brain. Guys. If, if you purchase the code from Pearson for my lab and mastering, they will give you an e-text. The problem with the e-text is you are not going to be able to use it for the tests. I'll explain about the tests later, but right now you will not be able to use it. Uh, you need you need a computer with a camera. We have, to, we have to proctor the exams. We have an online proctor called HonorLock. You will be taking all of your tests through HonorLock. Therefore, they need to monitor you. You need to have a computer with a, with a camera attached to it. If you don't have one, you need to borrow one from a family member or you need to borrow one from a friend. 
or you need to search out the college. The college at one point was loaning out computers. Three sources for you to get one if you don't have a computer with a camera. Look into it now. Don't wait till the last minute. You need to have a calculator and bring it to class each time. Notebook and a writing implement. Better yet, if you have the ability, what I would do, I would take the PowerPoints that I have, download those till you get six slides to a page and print them out. If you print them out, this means you're not gonna be writing extra stuff. So that would be the best thing to do. You need a periodic table. Uh, what I've already done for you is I've attached my PowerPoints and outline of the subject matter, videos and extra homework to the course that I'll be going through in a few minutes. Keep in mind guys, there are tutors. There are tutors that are in the library. Make yourself, avail yourself of them because in my 63 years in life, if I've learned one thing, it's that you don't learn the same as everybody else does. What I may not be able to put into your head, somebody in the tutoring office may be able to put it down. Another source, there is a discussion forum, a chat room that you have access to. Look, Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves so that you know that you can answer questions from one another. So, how are you going to be successful at this? What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna to attempt to Call in. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go take you through the course itself. Again, if you can't see what I'm looking at right now, top of the screen should be labeled modules. Are you ready with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. First thing, first thing is the syllabus. I have a copy of the welcome letter. Inside the syllabus, you have a schedule. This is the first place you look for determining when things are. Notice, Wednesday, you have a quiz due. Wednesday, you have their first quiz that is due. Okay? So this is where you are going to find, I need to move this. This is where you'll find when, when homework's due, when quizzes are due, and when you have tests. Questions about that? No. The schedule is subject to change. What happens is sometimes I have to spend a little more time on one subject than another, and therefore I may have to alter the schedule a little bit. Be aware that I make announcements by five o'clock on Sunday. I make announcements which address the assignment schedule for that week. I'll put them in the announcements and I will put them in, the, in an email I address to you. So you have three areas to look at for your particular assignments. If we go into the individual, I'm sorry, let's go up one more. If you go down, the page below the syllabus is the announcements. That is where you will see the individual announcements. I generally won't bother you too much. I'll generally give you one a, one a, one a week on Sundays by 5 p.m. 
So this is one place you can get your assignments. The great bulk of the course is in modules. And what I've got this aligned in is tests with the days and the subject matters I'm going to cover on that particular day. Down below that are extra homework assignments. These are not required assignments. These are extra homework assignments. But the benefit to you is this is where I draw a lot of my test questions from. So as I said, we've got days and subject matters for the individual tests, and we have extra homework assignments for that. I have other resources down at the bottom, which is where you are going to find a periodic table or anything extra that I want to give you. So if you don't have a periodic table, this is where you download it and save it. Again, that is in other resources. <clears throat> Luca, are you in? Luca, I just admitted you. Are you in, Luca? Luca, gone. Okay, now, if you go into the day one, if you go into any one of these individual pages within the modules, you're gonna find they're organized in three separate fashions. One of which is going to be the PowerPoints. Today, we're gonna to get through matter and we're, we may talk about the scientific method today. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get into something I call the online outline. And what the online outline, you're going to have to download it and then open it. This is an outline of the individual subject matter when it finally decides to open. All right. Within, within subjects. I will further subdivide that into more specific subject matters. Under each individual subject matter, I will tell you what slides are involved with that. I will give you a video for that particular subject matter. And I will give you the pages in your text that cover that particular matter. Each one of the days has its own online outline. Any questions? So if you're not understanding what I said during lecture, you can come here to the online outline and literally click on a video. And hopefully that video will be able to bring things more in line with your understanding. Any questions about this? I have a question about the materials. Okay. Materials, um, as in required materials or? So, yeah, for the required materials, we pretty much just only need the My Lab and Mastering and the periodic table and a calculator, right? Pretty much. All right. You can get by with it. I, I have to require the text. The reason I have to require the text is if you are a veteran mm -hmm. and I did not require the text, the federal government would not pay for it. Oh, That's okay. Why the text is is required. Okay. I've had other people pull A's and not buy the text at all. Okay. Of course, I've had people get F's and not buy the textbook at all either. So makes sense. All right. Um, are we good? Uh, office hours. I have a question actually today. I'm sorry. Somebody. Sorry. I need one one at a time. Okay, sorry. Do you have office hours today? Uh, office hours were 12 to 12.30. They're going to be in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open the Zoom meeting before 
I, uh, I'm going to open the Zoom meeting before the class begins at 1230. And that's when I'm going to consider my office hours. Okay. If, you need, if need be, I'm not doing anything after class. Just stay after class, okay? All right. Who, who has that? All right. I had a question about the, the hands-on lab. Uh, we just go to the Dale Mabry campus to pick that up? Yes. You can't. Okay. That's one of the ways. You can order it directly through HOL, but I'm not going to guarantee you're going to get it in time for when you need it. Okay. All right. Assignments, you don't need to concern yourself with this. This is basically for my gradebook purposes, and you can access the quizzes from here, but there are other things like the homework and a participation grade. These basically, if you, would, if you would call them up, there'd be nothing there. There's nothing there because all it is is a placeholder for me to put in the 150 points for your homework. Now, your quizzes. You access the quizzes. Let me do this. Let me go into student mode. All right. Now, if you are in quizzes, all you need to do is click on the quiz that's due. Take the quiz. Generally speaking, they are multiple choice, true, false for the most part. Every now and again, I will give you a short answer one. But this is where you are going to access the quizzes. Homework, you access in my lab and mastering. What's going to happen is this screen will pop up. You are going to open the My Lab and Mastering, and that will lead you through how to purchase the code for the homework. And I believe it, it will either give you the text as an e-text, or it will allow you to purchase the e-text at a reduced rate. Any questions so far? Yes, I have a question. I'm here. So you said if we get the e-text, we will not be allowed to use it on the test. No. Is that, oh, it, no. we are? We, no, you are not allowed to use an e-text on the test. Would we be allowed to use a real text on yes. the test? Yes. OK, cool. Thank you. I'll get into that in a few minutes. What about a printed copy? Printed copy of, if you, I'm sorry, you're asking if you take an e-text and print it? Yeah. If you do that, yes, you're allowed to use that on the test. Okay. I'll get into that again when I go through the actual syllabus. Okay, questions on the homework. I have a question. How uh -huh. is this program formatted? I've never used it before. How is it formatted? <laughs> oh dear God, did you just ask me a computer problem? Sierra? Uh, yes, I'm you not have... exactly sure how to use that program. I'm not sure where to look for the homework once I open it. Amazingly enough, the homework uh, has an introduction to master, my lab and mastering. It's the first assignment and it is due on the 20th of January. What it will do, Sierra, is it leads you through and tells you how to use the programming. Okay, and, thank you. And it's all extra credit. So if you do the introduction to my lab of mastering, you get all those points as being extra credit. Boy, I, I am just so good to you. I'm sorry, when did you say that the um, first homework was due? It's due on the 20th of January. Again, if you want to know when assignments are due, go to the syllabus, video and lecture schedule, and that will tell you. If you look down here, you will see 
Introduction to Mastering Due, 20th of January. And you said the homework is extra credit? That one. That particular one is extra credit. The one that's the 20th? Yes. Introduction to Mastering, that is down as extra credit homework. Okay. Um, I have a question. So if you buy the, um, the paper textbook, will it already have the, the access code? Maria, Maria, I'm not entirely certain. It used to. It used to, Maria. The code used to come with the textbook. I believe they have split that off now. They, they sell them separately now. Okay, thank you, David. So okay. there you go, Maria. So do I do, can I buy it at a library? Can you buy the textbook? No, the code. You can buy the code by going up to My Lab and Mastering. Mm -hmm. This screen will pop up. Remember, right now I'm in student mode. So this is what you're, you would see. And then you would hit My Lab and Mastering at this point you go through the process of buying a code. So where it says like you get to buy it with the e-text or without, that's where that's I'm the not, one. I, I'm not, uh, Maria, I am not going to say that you get the e-text for free. It used to be that way, but I'm not entirely certain at this point, okay? Okay. Sir, I also have another question about the textbook. Okay. So my sister took this class with you and she gave me her info to Cam. Um, did she like me? Did yes, she like yes, she really did. That's why she told me to take Come on, you. talk it up, talk it up. I, I, <laughs> I need to have my ego pumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she um, asked me to take you because you were like really good and stuff. So... Um, but she gave me her book for the intro to Kim that she bought. It's from 2018, so I'm asking if... if it's probably if, the fifth edition. Uh, the only problem you're going to have with that is uh, uh, the pages are not going to align. Okay. For the most part, it's going to be just the same, okay? Okay. Anything else, guys? All right, let's get out of here. All right. So, okay. So I have like my HOL lab kit. I, I emailed you, I, I believe not too long ago. Like I still have it here from a previous term or something. Like I still, I have one available. I don't, I don't believe I have to buy it. I do not believe you can use it. I don't believe you can use the HOL kit again. I think you need to buy another code. But don't quote me on that. What I would do with that is I would contact HOL and ask them that question directly, okay? Okay. All right, anything else, guys? All right, that was the My Lab and Mastering. We also have a forum. Each week, other than the first two weeks of the semester, each week, you have to add three responses to the discussion forum. First week and the second week, you are only going to have to add one response. You have a scavenger hunt that we're going to do in the first two weeks. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to call up the question or call up the topic. Nah. Okay. Oh man. No, Did we yeah. just see the answers? I missed it. Yeah, I I told I, answers, you missed it. You missed it. You snooze, you lose. So, I was Okay, I, I gotta get out of student view for a second. Because I have no idea why that says the 17th. All right, edit. Hmm. Sorry.
Ah, available from, there you go. That will deal, deal with 11 o'clock. AM done. Okay, sorry about that. Um, cancel. This is irritating. There we go. All right, now, sorry about that. All right, so if you're in discussions, all you're gonna have to do is click on that. And there are 10 questions here. I want one response. One response is all you need to give me for the first two weeks. After that, it will be three. So basically, all you are going to have to do, nope. Click on the subject matter. Then you're gonna have an answer down. They've changed this on me, swear to God. I'll fix it. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna get into a chat room. And I love it when they do things like, oh, my, my fault. Go down to reply, click on, you're gonna click on the subject matter. Click on reply then, you're gonna type whatever you type in there, then hit post reply. Are we good with that ladies and gentlemen? Yes sir. Wait, so the scavenger hunt answers we have to post on the student chat room? By next Sunday, not the answers. I've got another one to put up here, okay? So there will be one that I have to put up here and it is called the scavenger hunt. That one is due by next Sunday. Got it. There we go. Scavenger hunt. It's going to ask, you're going to need to do 10 questions. All you need to do is go down to reply, answer, please, guys, please answer them in the order in which they're asked. You're going to need to go into each one of them. Post reply, you're done. Okay, so say I put in something. Post reply. All right, now I've got a thread to the original question. If you want to apply to the thread, you don't go to the original question. You go to the thread. The thread is right here. That way you respond and hit post again. Do you understand how this is working? Yes. You don't want to search the actual what you posted, but for just continuation of what they said, everyone else? No. Well, okay. Sometimes you're right now. I want you to respond to these 10 questions. That's what you have to do this week. Easy. In the future, what's going to happen is I'm going to post some homework questions. I'm going to post some homework questions. You can answer the homework in these particular questions. That would count as one response. I give you three homeworks per week. All right. Now I have another chat room up here that I've devoted specifically to you guys. This has worked out wonderfully. Basically, what this other chat room is designed to do is it's designed for you to answer your own questions. I answer emails once a day in the morning. So you may not get an answer quick enough for, for your own, for your own uh, desire. 
So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna go into something labeled the student chat room. And you're gonna put in something to the effect of, I have no idea what that moron <laughs> was talking about. Post. Okay, now, now I have the original chat room, but I have a thread. If I want to respond to the, to the thread, if I want to respond to the thread, oh crap, how could it not? Yeah, that didn't seem like inactivity to me. What's that? That didn't seem like inactivity to me. Uh, I, I can't out. see why, but it did. Everybody close your eyes. Gotcha. Now, this is when you need to close your eyes. Okay, I'm in the chat room, okay? Can I, can I open it now? The chat room? No, can I open my eyes now? Oh. Ah, yeah, yes, yes, you can open your eyes. Does right, everybody thanks. see the screen? Yeah. Okay, so if I'm in the chat room and somebody replies, I have no idea what that moron was saying. Okay. Post reply. Now, if you come in and you see this thread, you can either respond to the original message or you can respond to the thread. I understood it perfectly. You must be a moron. We understand how this is working, guys. Moron? Are, are you trying to say moron? Or, okay. Never mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Mr. Popovich, Mr. Song. P. The key is what I want you to know. I was trying to be funny there. Okay. All right. The key is. This is the main topic. If you have them, if you have an in the chat room, if you have a new subject, then you want to put it in the chat room itself. If you go down and you see a comment that you want to make a comment on, then what you have to do is you have to at go into that particular comment and. Mm, Why do computers do nice what you tell them to do rather than what you want them to do? Basically, bottom line, bottom line is if you're in the discussion, just know you have the ability to go into the individual chat room. If you have a new subject, you want to enter it under the original subject matter. If you want to comment on somebody's comment, what you do is you <laughs> click on the click on the comment and that will allow you to post something and then put it in. Are we good there guys? I have a question. Mm. Yes. yes sir. You said that we needed to post three replies per week, is that three on the same or three on three different boards? Okay, what I'm going to do, what I will do for you is, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have this subject chat room, the student chat. And basically, if somebody doesn't understand something I said in lecture, they can enter that here. Then the other people in the class can comment on what that person said. That counts as a response. 
In addition to that, every week, what I'm going to do is I'll give you three homework problems. If you don't care to go into the chat room and respond there, you can just use these three homework lessons and type out your answers to that. And that will count as a response. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Are we good? The person who asked the question. Yes, thank you. All right. Thanks, Mr. Kui. So basically, this is all that the entire course has to go through. Now I need to go through the individual syllabus. Are you still with me on the screen, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. All right. So this gives you this gives you some basic information, the section, time meetings. Uh, it tells you my email address. If you want to email me, I answer emails generally in the morning. So guys, if you email me at two in the afternoon, I probably won't get back to you until about seven or eight the next morning. You have my phone numbers. Guys, I started giving these out probably about four years ago. And it's really, really helped because there are times when you guys have emergencies, like you can't get into honor lock, something of that nature. By all means, use the numbers to call me. These numbers are provided for you. Now, please, the only thing I ask is you don't abuse it. Uh, I, I, I really don't like taking calls at 3 a.m. I wouldn't either. Uh, basically, we have Course description, this is crap. Course objectives, important dates, guys. Question, Professor. Yes. Okay, so you so, so, so basically also teach like Gen Chem 1 and 2 with the labs and stuff? Do I? I have, I have taught those, but I'm not teaching them right now. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. All right, important okay. dates. We start, the course starts from today, it ends. The final is going to be on May 7th. That's my birthday. Congratulations. Mm. I'll make sure it's special for you. A lot, with a lot of questions. Yeah, um, thanks for right. the present. <laughs> Hard ones. Would you like a bow on it? Sure. <laughs> All right, you can, if you don't like what you're hearing today, guys, if you don't like what you're hearing today, guys, you can have until Friday to withdraw with the refund. You have up until March 24th. Uh, looking real quick. Uh, March 24th. You will, you will have gone through two tests at that time. So you will have been through about half, more than half the course at that time. Please guys, if you want to withdraw, come and talk to me. A lot of times you're more pessimistic about your grade than is realistic. I'll either talk you off the edge or push you. Fair enough? Yes. Uh, meaning? Meaning, <laughs> meaning I'll either call you back and say, hey, you really, really are doing okay. You really, really do need to stay in the class because you're not doing as bad as you think you are. Or by pushing you, I'll say, hey, it probably is a good idea for you to withdraw. Mm -hmm. I'll be as honest as I can with you. Uh, days off. Next Monday, we have off. The 15th of February, we have off. Our spring break is the 7th through the 14th. And you have the spring holiday, which is April 2nd. So if you have me in the face-to-face -face lab, <coughs> April 2nd is a Friday. We will not meet that day. Required materials I've already gone through. Basically, you need to get into Canvas. You need to get in Canvas by this particular uh, website. You need to be able to access the course material. I've been through all this stuff that I've talked about here so far. This is just another place where you can access it.
Uh, the text is Introductory to Chemistry, sixth edition. It looks like this. Can you see this, guys? Yes. You're seeing this? That is the text. You're going to need a calculator. Any calculator is allowed. Basically, even if you have a graphing calculator, if you're smart enough to figure out how to put the formula in the graphing calculator, you can use the graphing calculator. You are not allowed to use your cell phone or a computer calculator application on your computer during tests. Okay, you are not allowed to use the calculator on your computer during tests. You're not allowed to use your cell phone calculator on tests. Uh, there's a periodic table. Please download that and please bring it every week. We may not need it every week, but I'd like to have you have access to it. Final grade. Participation counts 170 points. Homework, 130. Your daily quizzes, there are 18 that count. Each one of them is 10 points, 180 points. You have four exams. Each one counts 125 for 500 total points. The final is worth 120 for a total of 800, 1,000 points. Now, guys, I have the right to lower the scale, but I promise you it will never be raised. By that, I mean I can lower an A to an 87%. That is the lowest it will ever get. So that if you have a score of 870 points out of the 1,000, then you will get the A if I choose to do so. I will never make it. So if I see that everybody's doing great, so I want to decrease the amount of A's, I can't do it by saying, okay, instead of being 900 out of 1,000, it's now 910. Does that make sense to you? Yes. yes sir. All right, quizzes. What you need to know. Quizzes are generally 10 questions. Five of the questions are going to be on material I have already presented. In other words, I'm hoping to get to matter today. So I will have five questions on matter, five questions on what I'm going to cover on Wednesday. Generally speaking, the five on the material I've already covered are more in depth than the ones on the material I'm going to cover. You just have to be aware of that. You will get questions on stuff you haven't been taught yet. That's the way, that's the way I have of making you go into the PowerPoints and at least go through the PowerPoints to find the answers and put them into the quizzes. Oh, so, so we're allowed to use the PowerPoints during the quizzes or? How am I going to check you? <laughs> All right. That works. Thank you. All right. The quizzes are due by 12 p.m. In other words, at noon. That's when they are due. I display the correct answers at 12.01. So guys, it's don't ask me. Do not ask me to submit a quiz late. It's a moot point because the answers are already given. You need to answer the quizzes by 12 on the day that they are due. There are 18 quizzes which are written and are in the course right now. I am going to give you two pop quizzes. In other words, at the last minute, I will say, you have to do this quiz by this date. So that means I have 18 that are in the course, two pop quizzes, a total of 20 quizzes. Each of them have 10 points each. You will be able to drop your two lowest results. So that 
adds up to the 180 points. Your homework. Basically, you will be doing homework through my lab and mastering. I have the ability, I have the ability to determine the amount of homework you do, as well as the correct answer percentage. Your homework results will be based upon the quantity of the homework you do and the quality of the homework you do. You are gonna get one grade and that grade is, the assignments are all graded collectively and worth 130 points. Throughout the whole semester. Throughout the whole semester, yes. Uh, Remember, so guys. Question, if, please. Yes. Okay. So you said quantity and quality. So could you make an example? So, for example, you have 10 questions. Okay. You try all 10, you give answers for all 10. Okay. This means uh -huh. that you have earned the quantity, all, all 50% of the quantity for that assignment. Assignment. But say you get seven of the 10 correct. Correct, okay, All right. 70%. So you have, that's, that's seven out of 10. If I go by point wise, okay, 70% of 50 points is 35 points. You earned all 50 for the quantity, but you only earned 35 for the quality. I add those two numbers together and you get 85%. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> it quite did it. I kind of got to no. Was that a yes? Or I no? didn't really understand it. No, not quite. Okay. So Say it was a little bit confusing. 100, uh, the homework is worth 100 points, okay? Okay. Say you do every homework problem, right? Right? If you do every yeah. homework point, the quantity, how much you do is worth 50 of those 100 points. If you do every assignment, you get all 50 of those points. But in answering those questions, in answering those questions, you got 70% correct response. Okay, the quality portion is 50 points as well, but you earned only 70% of that 50 points. 70% of 50 is 35. So if I add the quantity, which was 50 points, plus the quality, which was 35, I add those two numbers together and you get 85 points out of the 100. Are we good with that? Any oh. questions? No, sir. All right. Class uh, so, so basically, as we move on and go and go on with, with the homework, like I will have an example, right? Because me doing it and then you grading it, I will understand the concept of how it is with this class. Stay after class. Okay. Stay okay. after class and I'll see if I can explain it further for you. All right. Thank you. Class participation. 50% is doing exactly what you're doing right now. It's being in class, attending class. And if you're attending class, I'm assuming I'm going to be answering, asking questions. And I'm assuming over the entire semester, every, those questions will be evenly distributed. So you get 50% of the participation points just by showing up to class. The other 50% is administered through the discussion forum. Remember, I said you have to do three responses a week. First and second week, only one response. From the third week on, three responses. If you do those three responses, you will get the full participation points for that. That is worth 70 points. Questions on participation? No, oh, sir. All right, exams. Note, guys, homework and the class participation are 20% of your total grades. These are fairly easy things to do, and that's worth basically two grade levels. 
you have four exams. Each one of them is worth 125 points. I'm getting feedback from somebody. Thank you, whoever stopped it. You have four exams. Each of the exams is worth 125 points each. Note, the number I enter into the grade book reflects the point total, not the percentage. So if you get 100 out of the 125 points correct, you will have 100 entered into the grade book. That does not mean you got 100%. That means you got 100 of the 125 points correct. Looky here, guys. Your tests are open book. I have a question about that. About open book? Yeah, so if we're using honor love, we have to show our surroundings and then they see that like we have it like our book or anything. So would it detect it and like let you know when it's okay? I specifically, there are two things here. First of all, what honor lock does is they, all they do is they point out things that seem awry. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that makes the final decision as to whether it really is a point where you're cheating or not. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Second point, I put into honor lock the fact that these are open book tests. Basically, the reason I use honor lock is I don't want you typing in the question that I've just given you and have a browser give you the answer. I can't have that. That's the main thing I'm detecting. So ladies and gentlemen, when you get onto the tests, do not open another browser for any reason. All right, you can use anything open book. You can use the PowerPoints. You can use the actual test. You can use copies of the e-text. You're allowed all resources except your cell phone and another browser. Another thing, guys. Do not make texting motions. Do not do something like this while you're taking the test. If you get 90 less movement. Sorry, less movement. No, I'm not saying less movement, but can you see what I'm doing here? Doesn't it look like I'm texting below this camera? <clears throat> yes. So, I don't see it. No. No, honestly, no. The exam, brother. Don't text, okay? For any reason, don't test what text gotcha. while you're taking the test. If you score better than 90% on the raw score, by a raw score, what I mean is the score before any extra credit is added or before any curve is added to the test. If you score more than 90% on each one of the four tests, you're exempt from the final. Uh, if you're exempt from the final, what I'll do is I'll average the four individual test scores and that average will be entered as your final exam grade. If the exams don't add up to 75%, I will include one extra credit question, I'm sorry, excuse me. I will add extra credit with a value up to 10% of that test. Tests are worth 125 points. If the exam is, if average is 65%, what I will do is I will give you 13 points for your extra credit. If- May I speak? The, yes. Sorry. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, okay. So, okay, so let's say if you do, we have five total exams, right? Yeah. Okay, four, so let's- Four regular exams and- Oh, four regular. Okay, so let's say I get a 95 on all four of them, and then I want to take the final exam. Is that okay with Why? you? Or... You can. I, if you're averaging uh -oh. a 95%, I want you to take the final because that will up my percentage. 
if you want to take the final, oh, okay. feel free. Oh, I'm just making like a scenario or an example. Like you're not gonna stop us or anything, right? Like what's gonna happen? If we, we maybe do bad or good on the final exam, is it gonna affect us in any way? Like what is it gonna do? That's what I wanna know. If, if you, you take got a 95%. Final, uh -huh. If you take the final, the final will count. Okay. All right, so if you've got a 95% average on- On the floor If you them. have 95, you scored 95 on all four exams, it doesn't make sense to take the final because it can only hurt you. Oh. Okay. Oh, if, if you do really bad, it's gonna hurt you. Yes. Okay. But if you get an 80 or something on the final, you'll be okay, right? It depends, at, at this point, I, it's conjecture. I it, can't answer yeah, the it, question. Yeah, it depends, okay. But if you do have this, don't take the, you wouldn't recommend it to take a final exam, right? I yes. Okay. Makeups will be given only if I've granted prior approval or if a verified emergency occurred preventing you from taking the final. Guys, I have to create an entirely new exam. I don't want to do it. So you will take the exams during the period in which they're given. Uh, final is given December 7th. It cannot be replaced. In other words, if your final score is lower than any of the individual exams, you can't use the individual exams to replace the final. The final will count. And the final will replace any individual exam. Let me give you an example. You got a 50% on the first test. 90, 90, 90, and your final is a 90, then the 90 on your final will replace the 50 on the individual exam. Are we clear on that? Yeah, that's awesome. Professor, I have a question. Just one second, I will give you a chance. Just let me finish this thought, okay? On the other hand, if you score on your individual exams, 90, 90, 90, 90, and on your final, you get a 50. The final exam score will not be replaced by one of the 90s. So the final will replace an individual exam. An individual exam cannot replace the final. Now the question. Question. Would that be May 7th yes. instead of December 7th? Is it labeled? Is it in here as December 7th? Where are you yeah. seeing December 7th? Where are you seeing December 7th? On your, December 7th? Syllabus, on your syllabus, it's, it's right December. there next to the final. You just read uh, that. Uh, part. Yeah, it's May 7th. Okay. Guys, the, the syllabus is like 12 pages long. I didn't get this. I will upload a the correct date in a second okay okay do we have to re read it all by sunday the 12 read all pages what? or no like the syllabus or we don't have to because you said it's 12 pages do we like would you recommend you, it you should no? be re reading that regardless that's that's your contract between you and the and the class so yes you yeah, should yeah. read that okay. i couldn't have said it better yeah right thanks kevin thank you uh contesting cool. scores you can contest it one week after it's entered into the grade book. Then it's going to be considered permanent. Basically, guys, I was having people come up with tests. This was especially in a face-to-face -face class. They were coming up with tests and quizzes from like January, and they were bringing them to my attention in May. No, it doesn't work that way. You have one week to contest the score then it's considered permanent. I don't like late submissions. And attendance will be taken, generally speaking, sometime during the, the period. Uh, I'm gonna go through and uh, call those names that I don't have responses from yet. 
Don't arrive. Don't leave early or arrive late. Guys, you have a contract with me for a hundred for 75 minutes every Monday and Wednesday. Other information. What's like considered late? What's like considered late after the due date? Oh, oh, I thought you meant like to class. Oh, to class? What's considered late? Yeah, is there like a like five minutes? Because it's like a Zoom. So I know. Let's put it to you this way. It's not going to become an issue unless you make it an issue, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Any questions, guys? Questions on the syllabus? Any questions at all, guys? I do not have one. All right. What I'm going to do, I know there's only five minutes left in class. Okay, you guys ask a lot of questions, and unfortunately, that put me behind. I am faced with the dilemma Sorry. of... No, no, there's absolutely no pro question, problem about that. I am faced with the dilemma of giving you questions on uh, matter on the quiz that's due on Thursday without you having any, without you having any uh, training in it. So what I'm proposing is I'm going to continue on. If you have to leave, I understand. But I'm going to continue on and give the lecture in matter. I will be posting the recording of this lecture by tonight at midnight. So if you have to leave, I understand. And even if you don't want to stay, I'm basically, this is, this is um, in four minutes, you're on your own time. If you want the lesson, either stay a little bit afterwards, or I want you to upload the recording. Is that fair enough? Is there any objection to that, guys? I have, a, I have a question. Come on. Where, where would the recording be uploaded? Modules. Okay. You're going to, everything is, everything for the course is in this page. You go down to the very bottom here and looky there. This has every Zoom meeting I did last semester. I'm going to keep them in there. The reason I'm going to keep them in there is just in case the recording doesn't, doesn't make it for some reason or other. Or if you'd like to have another presentation of the material. So those who remain in here, I will make another module here, which is going to be labeled Zoom Meetings 2021. Fair enough? Yeah. Yes. Any questions about anything, guys? I have one question. I'm here. Um, I'm trying to make it to the bookstore in time to get the lab kit. So can I email you the questions that I've written down? Uh, either that or ask me them. At, uh, can you can you be here at noon on Wednesday? Um, I email me. Email me the yeah. questions. Email okay. me the questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're going to stop share and I'm going to get into the matter. Thank you for your time, Professor. No problem. And again, I apologize for this, but I really do want to get this done today while I can. It shouldn't be that much. It should not be that much for one thing, it shouldn't be that much. And for another thing, this is all material I'm sure you've had before. Mr. P, um, so the class starts at 12.30. What time does it finish normally? 1.45. Okay. okay. Again, you are here because you want to be here. 
Be oh, because before, he, before, I wait, love before Bill I leave, Bill. before I leave, Taylor Crane. It's Taylor Crane here. Uh, Lucas Reed. Yes. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, Emery Withers. Emery Withers. Not bad, only two. All right. Wait, did you? I was filling up my cup of water. Did you call my name? I'm sorry. Who's me? Who's my name? Oh, Noah T. Noah, yes. Noah, I got you. Uh, okay. I got you in the first because while we were waiting, while I was waiting to, for the class to begin, I was taking attendance at the time. Ooh, ooh. All right. Are you seeing? I'm here, Professor. Who's, who's I'm? Lennox, I'm here. I got you. I already had you, Lennox. Um, I can't stay, but I'll watch the Thanks. recording. Later. No, no, that's fine. I, it's perfectly understandable. I just want to get, first of all, I believe if you've taken any chemistry at all in your life, yeah. you've had this before. Okay. Yeah, I took chemistry. All right. So I would go ahead and look at the video anyway, though. All right. I will. Thank you. All right. I'll have to come back to. Mr. P. No, I, I, I'm, I, I don't feel, believe me, it's my fault for having this extended. So I, I don't feel there's no pain here involved. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, when I do my PowerPoints, the first slide is very important because what it does is it breaks the PowerPoint into the individual subject matters that I deem important. So we're going to need to get into what the definition of matter is. We're going to get into the law of conservation of mass, states of matter, classification of matter. We're going to get into something called the law of definite proportions, mixture versus pure substances, and homogeneous versus heterogeneous. So all of these subjects will be covered in this PowerPoint, and miscibility versus immiscibility. Now, by definition, matter has two properties. It occupies space, and it has mass. If something has mass and it takes up space, it is matter. All matter is composed of atoms. And what an atom is, is it's the smallest identifiable part of an element. It's the smallest identifiable unit of what an element is. You can't break it any further and still be an element. And we have three states. The states are solid, liquid, and gas. There's actually a fourth state called plasma. But realistically, we're not going to have to get into what plasma is, which is just a superheated gas. The three states of matter that we're going to deal with on Earth are solid, liquid, and gas. If we lived on the sun, that would be another matter. Solids have a fairly rigid structure. Liquids, basically the molecules can slide over one another. In gases, the atoms have nothing to do with one another. Solids are tightly packed. They're very, very dense. What a solid may do is it could vibrate a little bit. It could jiggle a little bit, but generally they don't move from their position too much. It's solid. You can't push your arms through a solid material. On the other hand, if we have a liquid, liquids are close together, but they have no regular arrangement. Solids have regular arrangement. Liquids don't. They slide past one another. 
And literally speaking, you can push liquid molecules out of the way of one another. Gases are well separated from one another. One gas atom really has very, very little to do with another gas. They have very, very high speeds and they move independent of one another. So the slide you really need to pay attention to. Solids, rigid shape, fixed volume. Liquids, no regular shape, fixed volume. Gases will take the shape of whatever contains it and it will take the volume of whatever contains it. Do I have anybody left? Yes, yeah. I'm All right. Thank you, Noah. Actually, I, I'm going to look. Oh, I still have 12 people uh, in here. Uh, professor, like this, I'll, after lecture, I'll be able to find this, right? This is re being recorded, right? I'll be do, able to find this info. Are you talking about the recording? or? I'm talking, you, I'm talking about this right now. Yeah, basically this. The recording? Yeah, where you're going through, yeah. The recording will be in a separate module labeled Zoom Meetings 2021. Great. Okay. The PowerPoint uh -huh. is already there. In the, it's in day one. Uh, it's in day one of uh, the first test module. Okay. Thank you. Now, matter can be classified in several ways. If something is a substance, we can classify it as to being an element. If it's an element, all the atoms in that sample are the same. If all the atoms in a particular sample are the same, you have an element. The other pure substance is called a compound. Now, compounds are made from two or more, uh, from atoms of two or more elements, and they are combined in the same manner. Compound, two or more elements combined in the same manner. So pure substances, compounds, elements. Guy by the name of Joseph Proust. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, you are responsible for knowing the names of these guys and what they accomplished. Guy by the name of Joseph Proust in 1793 came up with the law of definite proportions. And what Proust basically said was each compound has the same ratio of atoms of as every other compound of that same type. In other words, every water has two hydrogen atoms to one oxygen atom. Every methane has one carbon to four hydrogens. It doesn't matter how it's made. It doesn't matter where it originated from. All methanes will have one carbon and four hydrogens. This is what the law of definite proportions is. So basically, if you have a compound, each and every time you have that compound, you know that the ratio of the element, masses of the elements is going to be the same each and every time you have that particular compound. For methane, you get three grams of carbon to every one gram of hydrogen. If you have 360 grams of water, you have, Ugh, that's not right. Guys, this is a chance. You guys blew a point. You blew a point, guys. If you have 360. 360 grams of methane. 
Remember, you have to call the error out before I find it. You have 360 grams of methane, you have 270 grams of carbon and 90 grams of hydrogen. And this is nothing more than repeating what I've already said, guys. So if we have a substance, because compounds are basically pure, because elements are basically pure, we can lump them together as substances. So a substance is either an element or a compound. Element or compound. Let me see who's here. Ah, I'm losing you by the second. Angelica. Come uh, on, let's do these quick. Silver. Element. Element. Kelsey. Table salt, NaCl, element or compound? Compound. Uh, Joy? Joy, sugar. Are you calling Angela Joy? Angela, I'm sorry. A Angela. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say element. Okay, Angela. Do you know? Do you know what chemical symbols are? Or, yeah, elemental symbols are? Yes. Okay. Now, look at the compound. Does this have more than one element that's involved in it? Uh, yes. So if it has more than one element, is it an element or is it a compound? Compound. Very good. Okay. Next, can next answer. Iron, Angela. Um, element. Ian, ammonium bromide. Oh, compound. Compound. Mm -hmm. And selenium. Uh, for me? Uh, no, Lennox. Okay. Lennox, you there? Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Hello. Sorry. Element or compound, Lennox? For se selenium. Yes. Uh, element. I'm, element. I'm nice. Okay. Basically, elements have. The, you have to understand what the elemental symbols are, and I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. You need to know what the symbols are. So, AG is the elemental symbol for silver. There's only AG there. There's not another element there. So if there's not another element listed, it must be an element. On the other hand, when I have sodium chloride or table salt, I have Na, which is the symbol for sodium, and I have Cl, which is the symbol for chlorine. I have two elements. If I have two elements, I have a compound. Simple enough, Lennox? Uh, sorry, sorry. what did you say? Could you go over it real quick? Sorry. All right. A, a little bit slower, sorry. All right. Table salt. This is the formula for table salt. You have to learn the elemental symbols. If I know that the elemental symbol for sodium is Na, and I know that the elemental symbol for chlorine is Cl, that indicates that this substance has two elements in it. If it has two or more elements in it, that means it is a compound. Make sense, Lennox? Uh, I think I might, I might have to understand it separate what both of them mean first. You're going like to have to Lennox, okay. you're going to have to memorize them. I'm understand. Going to show, I'm going to show you a list in a few minutes yes, that, sir. of the elements whose symbols you're going to need to know. All right. Thank you. Now, if you combine two or more chemicals, uh, two or more compounds or elements, what you have is a mixture. 
So if you put silver and gold together, mix them up, you now have a mixture of gold and silver. If you have salt and you put the salt in the water, you have two compounds. You now have a mixture. A mixture can be a compound with a compound, an element with an element, or a compound and an element. Unlike compounds, mixtures do not have to have the same amounts of different substances. Noah. Yeah. Have you ever swam in the bay, in the, uh, not in the bay, in the, uh, ever been to Clearwater Beach? I have, yes. Have you sucked up some water when you got in? Accidentally. All right. Does that taste stronger than if you sucked up the pasta water that your mother was making lasagna in. It sure does. So both of them contain salt and water, one stronger. That means there's more salt in the ocean than there is in your pasta water. But it's still yeah. a mixture. They don't have to have the same amounts. Remember, this is the truest thing I've said today. All pizzas are not created equally. If you go in and you buy a Totino's pizza, that does not have the same amount or quality of pepperoni that a Cappy's pizza does. Mixture of pure substance. Noah, a Mai Tai. Uh, mixture. Mixture. It's got all kinds of rum, fruit juices. Absolutely a mixture. Laren, copper wire. Uh, a pure substance. Pure substance. Air, Lucas. Mixture. Very good. Gold ring. Be careful when you're answering this. Think about what carrot means. Michael. A mixture. Why? Because there's other metals in there as well. Uh, 24 carat means pure gold. I used to have my first wedding ring uh, was a gold nugget ring. And the reason I had to get rid of it is I literally pounded all the nuggets down. Gold is a soft metal. The reason you add other metals to gold is because it makes it a harder substance. So this particular ring here is, yeah, I gotta say, 18 carats. That means the percentage, 18 out of 24 is a percentage of gold there. Rust, what do we think? I gotta see another person. Anybody below? No. Susanna. Mixture. Rust. Would it be mixture? No. Pure substance. Rust is a pure substance. Okay. If I had only rust, the only thing that would be composed, that rust would be composed of is iron three oxide or Fe2O3. So rust is a pure substance, even though it looks icky. Right, Susanna? Doesn't rust look icky? Yes. So the ickiness of a substance doesn't necessarily mean whether it's pure or not, okay? Now, tell me if you've ever had a chemistry professor say ickiness before. I have not. Glad to be the first. Now, if we have mixtures, there are two types of mixtures. One is homogeneous or yeah, homogeneous. The other is heterogeneous. Homogeneous means you can't make any distinguishing, you can't distinguish one of the substance that makes up the mixture from the other. Heterogeneous means that you can pick things off. 
If you have salt in water, you put the salt in there, you still have clear liquid. You can't distinguish the salt crystals from the water. It all looks the same. You have two or more substances that are uniformly mixed. You can't tell what it's made of just by looking at it. On the other hand, if I have a pizza, dear God, if I have a pizza, I'm picking those olives. Those black olives are gone. I'm going to pick them and throw them out. Mushrooms, gone too. And God forbid anybody ever puts an anchovy on any one of my pizzas. You know, guys, one anchovy will molest an entire pizza. <laughs> anybody like anchovies? No. Anchovies are all right, but I don't know about eating them. I don't really like eating no, anchovies. I don't mind. Actually, they can all swim in the ocean for all I care. I yeah. just don't want them on my pizza. Yeah, that's understandable. But look at that. I can pick those olives out. I can pick the mushrooms out, right? So that means that it is a mixture that I can distinguish one of the, one of the pure substances from another. Carbonated water, Michael. Is that hom homogeneous or heterogeneous? Homogeneous. No. You can't see the minerals or. No. Let me show you, let me tell you something. It depends upon the circumstances, okay? You have a Coke. Is, am I speaking with Michael? Yes, sir. Michael, if you have a two liter bottle of Coke, right? You open it. Can you see the gas bubbles? Yes, sir. So if you can see the gas bubbles, that means they're separate from the rest of the Coke, right? Yes. So it would seem to be heterogeneous, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand, while you have that cap on and you haven't disturbed the Coke at all, can you see the individual bubbles? No. So guys, if I give you a question like this on the test and my correct answer is homogeneous and you say, well, Mr. Popovich, it's heterogeneous because when I open the Coke bottle, I can see the bubbles. As long as you can explain your answer, you'll get credit for it. This is an example where it could be either depending upon the circumstances. You all understand that. As long as you can explain yeah. your answer away to me in a reasonable fashion, you will get credit for it. How about rum and Coke? Has anybody ever out there had an adult beverage? What's rum? What's rum? <laughs> I you live in Tampa I for God's beverage. sakes. I don't believe I know, maybe I might know the picture of it. But rum is an alcoholic beverage. It's like, it's like Captain Jack Sparrow's drink of choice. Like, you know, is it like type of vodka and stuff like that and Hennessy and stuff? You know, pirates, yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Rum is an alcoholic beverage. Okay. Those of you that have, oh, okay. I, I've not you heard that of have it had yet. a rum and coke, those of you that have had a rum and coke, is this going to be homogeneous or heterogeneous? Can you tell the difference from where the rum is or where the coke is? No. No. Uh, no, as a no, general but you rule, can tell not. The the ice. It's, hom it's homogeneous. It's homogeneous. A Reese's candy bar with M&Ms. Ooh. Heterogeneous. Heterogeneous. Yeah. You can see and you can literally pick out those M&Ms if you had to. Cake dough. Uh, homogeneous. Have you ever made a cake? Mr. P. Yes. It would have. It could be. Um, Mr. P. One second. Who's who's got me for the Mr. Who keeps saying Mr. P? Oh, Lennox. Sorry. Oh, okay. So can you clarify the homogeneous or heterogeneous so that I can know where I'm going, where where I'm heading to? Okay. Okay. Lennox. Yes. Pizza. 
Think of pizza. Can yeah. you pick out yeah, the, the, my can favorite you pick food out the things in a pizza? Sorry, can you what? Can you pick off the things in a pizza? Uh, yes. All right. If you put iron, you know what iron looks like, Lennox? F yeah, F-E. If you have iron and you mix it with sand, can you literally see the iron is different from the sand? Most likely. If you took a magnet, would you pick up any sand? Would you be able to separate the iron away from the sand? Sand? Mm. Hmm, good question. Okay, let me see if I can come up with a better example. Washington fruit, maybe? Light bulb. Mm. Do you know what a fruit salad is? Or a salad? Okay, a salad. Oh, okay, salad. All right, go ahead, salad. Can you pick the carrots out of a salad? Can you? Can pick I the pick the carrots out of this? You hate carrots. Can you pick the carrots out? Out of the salad? Yeah. Yeah. If you okay. can identify the carrots to pick them out, then it's heterogeneous. Okay. Now, okay. now, if you take that salad and you put a blender in it and you blend the snot out of it, okay, so that you make a V8, you make a V8 uh, beverage. Can you detect the carrots anymore, Lennox? You put uh, them in a blender. You put them in a blender. Uh -huh. Can you pick out the carrots once you put them in that blender? No, no, no. That's it. If you, everything, no. Too no, late. You so too late. after you blended them, you've made them homogeneous. Okay, Lennox. You let got me that? just. Okay, so let me just. Okay, so the genius is what the gene. No, has nothing to do with genes. Okay, okay. This is just okay. the terms. The terms, okay. Homogeneous means everything's the same. You can't distinguish one of the substances from the other. Heterogeneous, you can distinguish them. If you're making cake dough or bread dough, as you're putting all the ingredients in, you're putting the eggs in, the flour, the sugar, okay. uh, whatever, uh, chocolate, you're putting them all in, you're blending them all together. You can't see the eggs anymore because it's part of the mixture. You can't see the chocolate anymore. It's part of the mixture. Therefore, cake dough is going to be homogeneous. Okay. Now, we also have other mixed, specific mixtures which are called solutions. And when we have solutions, one of the substances is a liquid. It can be a compound or it can be a element. But one of the two elements of the solution mixture is going to be a liquid. And a solution is by definition homogeneous. You cannot see the salt when it's in salt water. You can't see it. So it is going to be a homogeneous mixture. Now, when we are dealing with liquid mixtures, we have a separate definition from homogeneous and heterogeneous. Has anybody ever tried to mix up salad dressing? Oil and vinegar. Have you ever tried to do that? Yes. Okay, you mix them up. Then you let them sit. What happens to the oil and the vinegar? They separate. They separate out. Okay, so in actuality, the oil doesn't mix very well with 
the with the vinegar. Because they don't mix together, they form separate phases. And if they form separate phases, this means they don't mix. Think of it like miscible sounds like mixable. If, they, if two liquids are miscible, that means they mix entirely. If you throw any amount of ethanol in any amount of water, they mix 100% of the time. But if you put gasoline and put that on water, that's going to never mix. So the example of the gasoline and water is immiscible, doesn't mix. The example of the uh, alcohol and water is a miscible solution. Uh, I'll get into this later. Solutions consist of a solvent, which is the substance doing the dissolving, and a solute, the substance that is being dissolved. Just a definition here. You don't really have to know this now. You will have to know it when we get into the solutions chapter later on this semester. Now, can you tell me, Susanna, which of these two liquids looks like they mix well together, the left one or the right one? The left one. Left one looks like it's mixed. That you can't tell. You cannot tell in this liquid whether or not what, where one begins and the other ends. This one, these ones aren't kind of mixing together. And when you have two immiscible liquids that are put together, what you will find is there is a very specific line that marks the boundary between one of the liquids and the other. And that is it. Any questions, guys? Questions on matter? No. And I am very, very sorry I took a half an hour out of your lives. No, it's OK. Uh, again, this will be recorded. And you will have access to it, hopefully by midnight tonight. Any questions on that? No, sir. Not at all. You're free to go. All right. Have a good all right. day. See you on Wednesday, Professor. Night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, professor. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you said we could stay after class, right? That's fine. Yeah. If you want to okay. stay after class to ask me anything, I'm here. Real quick. All right. All right. You're so, the only one here, Lennox. So all right. don't, don't worry about saying anything. You're you're fine to say anything. Okay. Okay. So so for the textbook, right, you're saying, this is like, for the homework, is it like my math lab? Or... Is it by Pearson as well? No, I'm saying like my math lab. So I, I for understand. our textbook. Uh -huh. I, I'm sorry, are you asked, you said homework and then you said my math lab. I, I'm not aware who publishes my math lab, Lennox. If okay. it is, if it is by Pearson, it's probably very similar. Okay, but but I'm asking for our textbook for the class. Do we? Is it gonna be uh, like homework through my math lab, or the or the piercing? That's what I don't know. Okay, Lennox, the homework yeah. that you are going to be graded on, the one you're going to be graded on, graded on. is my lab and mastering. Okay. Oh, my lab and medicine. Okay. There is extra homework. I've provided extra homework in the modules in the course in the computer. Okay, Lennox. Okay. So, so there, I, 
That's extra homework. Okay. You okay. don't have to do that. You're not getting graded on it, but I think it's a good idea because of the yeah. fact that uh, it's- You might need extra help. Right. Okay. Now, the other thing, you were having trouble understanding the homework in the way it was graded. Yeah. All right. Say the homework is worth 100 points. Okay. All right. I'm saying that because of how much of the homework you do is worth 50% of that 100 points or the quantity, the amount you do of the homework is worth 50 points. Did you understand that? Maybe you might have to kind of like write visual on the... I don't know if there's a a wind a page that you can open right now and share screen with it because I don't know because because okay yeah let me I'm gonna put this I'm gonna try and do screen. it by paper because it's easier with paper can you see this yes sir all right you see that there's a hundred points at the top if half of those points are going to quality mm -hmm. then that means fifty points then, yeah. And if half of those points are going to quality, that's also 50 okay. points. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Lance? Oh, okay. I see it better now. Okay. So, oh, sorry. Could, could you please bring, bring nope. it back? No problem. I was going to write on it again. Okay. okay. So, a hundred. Yeah. So, a hundred is the total points. Is the total points. And then 50. 50 for the amount that you do. For the amount that you do, and then and another 50. 50 on how many you get correct. Okay. Yes, okay. So the 250 separates the quality and the quantity. Yes. So yeah. if you get, if you do 40% okay. of the amount of the homework, okay, and totally okay. you get 30% correct. All right. So that's what I'm saying. Right. You see that? You got 40% of the amount. You did 40% of okay. the homework. 40% for quality? 40% for quantity. Okay. Good enough. Yeah, we'll do it that way. You got 40% of the total answers correct. Okay. All right. So you got 40% of the total answers correct. And you did 45% of the homework. You did 45% of the homework. You got 40% correct. Okay. Your total uh, number of so points. Can, can you bring it up a little bit? Let me see. Sorry. Okay. 45% is the quantity. Okay. Yes. So. If the quantity has a total of 50 points, then 45% of that 50 is equal to 22 and a half. I'm sorry, that doesn't, that's not right. Yeah, that's right. If 40, if you did 45% of the homework, okay? Okay, then 40%, let's see. What, Lennox? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm listening. Go ahead. If so 40%. You did, uh -huh. you, the, if you did 100% of the homework, you would get 50 points, right? Okay. If you only did 45% of the homework, then you can only get 45% of the 50 points, which is 22 and a half. Oh, Does out of 100. Okay, out no, of it's 100. out of 50. Out of 50. Because your quantity score is only 50 points. Oh. So 45% that you did of the 50 points gives you a score of 22 and a half points. Of oh, 22 and a half points. Okay. Now, you got 40% of the answers right. Okay. That's the quality. You got 40% right. So 40% of 50 is equal to 20, 20 points. 
20 so points. Okay. You got 20 points for your quality and 22 and a half for your quantity. This gives you a total score for the homework of 42 and a half points. Okay. That's interesting. Trust me, Lennox. It's not, it's not going to hurt you. As long as you attempt all the homework. Definitely. I would, I would, I would do all of them. Definitely. If you do all the, if you try to do all the homework, that means you're and going try to get, get that means you're going to get at least 50 points. Oh, at least half. At least half if you do all the homework. Okay. Oh, but then it comes to the point where you do all of the questions correct. The, the correct questions, which will help me out to get the 100 points. Right. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, I see. Okay. So are you able to share the screen with me? Like what I have to do with the textbook? Because I haven't bought the textbook for the class. What you have to do for the textbook? Yeah, like what what class. is what is the textbook? Yeah, no, I know the textbook, but what do I have to do? Like I'm not, I'm Lennox. I'm sorry. I'm not understanding what you're, you're not understanding. Asking. Okay. No, I'm not. Okay. So the textbook, right? What do I do about it? I have to purchase it or it's and on, it's online already. It's through my canvas, my textbook. The textbook I, you would have to purchase. Purchase. All right. Through what HCC bookstore or. Yes. You can purchase it through the HCC bookstore. Okay. Or you can. Uh, go through Amazon, but it's a specific book I, I told you, Introductory Chemistry mm -hmm. by Tro, T-R-O, sixth edition. And you're going to find that in the syllabus. In the syllabus. All right. Are you, you seeing the screen, Lennox? Yeah, I'm seeing the screen right now. Okay. So you're going to go down here in the syllabus to required material. Uh, okay. Down to text. And there's where that information is, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, so I, oh, I thought it was on mastering chemistry and stuff from Pearson, you said. You, you are, that's, that's the second option. If you buy the code, the code will give you access to the e text. Well, well, you may have to pay extra for the e text, but you can purchase. If you purchase the code, you can purchase an e text through uh, through Pearson. Uh. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, okay. I see. So basically if, okay. Do you, do you, do you have a chance or a moment if you could open the homework real quick so that I can see what I can do? I'm open trying it. To see something. If I yeah. open it, if My I, lab open and it uh -huh. I, I can't really do that because I don't have student access to it, Lennox. Okay. All I have is the instructor portion of it, which is going to be a totally different screen from what you different, have. Different screen. All right. Oh, are okay. you are you seeing what's on the screen now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. So basically, if I go to all assignments, I can go to the homework one, and basically. Uh, edit assignment, organization. You're not going to enter it this way. This is just the way I have to do it. And you just call up a question. And that would be the question. You got to look at these statements and determine which statement is false. Uh, okay, okay, okay. 
So yeah. I don't. Okay, so I don't have to buy the textbook, right? I just have to have, have. You don't have to buy the textbook. You do oh, have exactly. To, you do have to purchase the code. Oh, the code. That's it. Okay, okay. And the code is only one option, which is through here, right? Let, let me note it down. Okay. You have to. You have to get the code. Okay. And that's the way you're going to get purchase the code, is to go to. Okay. Go to the screen. The screen. Go into the individual course, which in our case is okay. this one. You see here, part of the, one of the choices is my lab and mastery. If you click on that, that will get you to this screen and you open it and do everything they ask you to do. Oh, okay. Okay. So just buy the code for now and that's it. Yes. Pretty much. Okay. All right. And remember, right, okay. you, you have to do quiz one by Wednesday. Quiz one by Wednesday. That's it. That's it. And then the discussions, the discussions, right? And the discussion, yes. Okay. All right. I believe this is good. Thank you. Okay. No problem, Lennox. Professor, I have a question for you. Yes, um, Lucas. I got two questions. My first question is, um, I, I'm, I sent you an email about this, so, um, and I just sent it recently. So if we, I just wanted to ask you. Um, so the lab on Friday, um, so I'll miss two of those classes. Is that detrimental to my grade? I can, I texted you the actual dates. Okay. Um, yeah. All right, Lucas, what are you missing? Is it this week you're missing or is it? This, this week and then the um, March, um, I'm sorry. It's March 12th because my sister is getting married. Okay, is there, is there, okay, why, why are you missing this week? Um, because originally I was gonna take the lab online uh -huh. um, and I was, I've been looking for taking the lab in person. And so I, I found that you had a slot available, but unfortunately prior to signing up for the class, uh, I have a flight to Atlanta for some work this weekend and I leave Friday afternoon and I, that won't happen again. It was just that I, I said yes to it prior to uh, signing up for the class. Okay, Lucas, here's what I'm going to do for you. All right. The only thing what's due this week is the safety issue. Okay. Okay. So you have to take the safety quiz and submit it by next Friday. Okay. All right. Let me okay. see what's let me see what's in there. Is that where you have to watch that safety video yes. in class with the Yes. Fire are, extinguishers are seeing, and stuff. Uh, Lucas, are you seeing my screen now? Yes, sir. All right. Basically, what I did was I went into, got into the course, mm -hmm. and I clicked the safety module, which is right here, introduction and safety. Okay. Okay. Um, the trouble with the face-to-face -face class is, is that's not recorded. Okay. But. A lot of the information you're going to need is in that top thing. There's also a short video. Okay. Right? So if you click on the first thing and open it. By the way, Lennox, if you're still there, Lennox, are you still here? Lennox? Okay. He may be here. I, he, I don't know whether he's in the the online class is different from the face-to-face. -face. All right, you okay. see, this is the agreement, okay? Uh-huh. I'm gonna need you, I need you to make sure that you print this out 
and uh, sign it and turn it in a week from Friday. Okay, Lucas? Okay. Okay. But you're seeing what this agreement is. It's got all kinds of rules in here, okay? Okay. Just look at these rules, and for the most part, you will get through the uh, uh, answer for the safety and syllabus quiz. Okay. Also, open up the syllabus that I've included in the... All right, let me get out of here. Okay, that's the safety part. You need to go to syllabus and the syllabus is right there. Okay? Yes, sir. And some of, that's the schedule. So you're gonna need to answer, I think, I think I've got it like 15 to five syllabus versus, hmm. I'm going to have to go fix this because I don't see where my syllabus is. Okay. Ah, I don't have the so I have to upload the syllabus yet. Okay. Okay. It's not a big deal. It's just something I have to do. Okay. Okay. So you'll find the syllabus on this page eventually. Okay. Hey, okay. is that fine right. with you, Lucas? Sounds good. So that's that first question. And then second question is, um, how, how are your, your tests going to work? Sometimes with classes during this COVID season, it's been like they give you a, a window of 24 hours and you take the test in that 24 Eight to five. hours. Eight to five. Eight to five. Okay. Because I have, like, I, I see, I'm the one that sent you the email yesterday about having that class five minutes before ah, your the calculus class. yes sir i yes, do sir. read i do read these things yes uh, sir uh you, uh, re you responded you responded too but so i was just trying to make sure i didn't need to find a place on campus where like i can go take the test instead of taking it at my house like later in the afternoon or prior so no i, I generally give you you guys an eight to five window okay sounds and good literally speaking lucas it's not that much of a big deal for me to extend that out. I okay. just I just like to have it done by five so I can get it graded that evening. No, I, I appreciate that. So okay, and I can I can make it work in that time frame. That's my responsibility. So um, I'll, I'll make it make sure it's done within the eight to five time frame. Um, but cool. Anything else, Lucas? No, sir. That answers all my questions. So I really appreciate it. No, no problem at all. And even as we speak, we're getting the syllabus in there. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so all I, all I right. can't, this, I, I need a witness, Lucas. My wife doesn't believe I can do two things at the same time. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can. I can't, but you can. <laughs> all right, so. course documents, okay. Awesome. Happy to be of help. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. Have a good day. You have a good day too. Lennox, you done with me? Uh, I think about quite, but I just have to make sure I just have this stuff. Okay. So quiz, uh, is this usually your office hours or no? My office hours are going to be Monday and Wednesday, 12 to 1230. I'm going to open the Zoom meetings early. Okay. Oh, but this is, so this is basically not your office hours at the moment. Right now, no. Okay. On the other hand, when we do the online lab, which is nine, are you in my online lab or are you in my face-to-face -face lab? Oh, no, online, definitely online. Okay, you're online. Okay, so everything I just told him is not true for you guys, okay? It's a totally okay. different Totally different. Okay. Oh, I mean, I, I stepped out a minute and then I came back. So I, re I really didn't hear too much. Oh, he's your face-to-face -face online. He has your face-to-face. Um, -face. Yes. Okay. 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 So that, that's okay. Good. All right. Sorry. I needed to do that because I didn't have it in there. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are we, are we good, Lennox?
uh, okay. So Wednesday quiz, uh, first quiz D, right? And then I have to make sure I buy the code like ASAP. But I'll be able to use it for 14 days, right? Yes. The camp, the, okay. So that's fine. Okay. Okay. And, and that, that is the cheapest option, right? For the mastering chemistry. It, it comes with the book and everything, right? Yes, I believe uh, so, Lennox. Okay. I don't, I, I, I don't know whether it comes with the book or if the book, book or is, not. is available at a reduced price. Price, okay. All right. All righty, sir. Okay. So, yeah, I believe I'll see you Wednesday. So, Wednesday, I should have the quiz done, and then I should just have my matching chemistry and then my discussions done by the end of the week. Okay. That's only, it's only one discussion this week. It's only one discussion, yeah. This week and next week, only one. Next, yeah. All right. Yes, okay. Sir. So, this week, the 11th through the 15th, one discussion due there. 18th through the 23rd, one discussion there. Now the 25th through the 30th, you'll have to do three by that day, okay? Oh, three by that day. Yes. Which which is like another week, another week. Yes, I will. Okay. I will have that available to you at that time. Okay, okay, at that time, okay. All righty. Okay. All right, so. Thank you so much and see you Wednesday. I will see you Wednesday, Lennox. All right. Thank you, sir. Bye.